Thank you. Um, the winning entry is by Helen Tookie, and it's called Beryl Corot, Text and Commentary. This seemed to me, and I think my fellow judges, the most ambitious of the poems that were submitted for the Whitworth Prize. It springs off from an exhibition by the American artist Beryl Corot that's still on show in the North Gallery, as far as you can go in that direction. It seemed the poem that addressed most interestingly the task of writing about the complex experience of encountering works of art in a gallery like the Whitworth. No, not like the Whitworth, but in this particular gallery, in the Whitworth, because many people have told me that they think this is a particularly special place to encounter art, to meet together and to speculate about the nature of life, the universe and everything in between, to be open to new experience. The poem explores and weaves together different perspectives, different voices, different modes of expression, different locations, and different ways of using language. It is a poem that, at least for me, tries and succeeds in encapsulating the multi-layered experience of looking at art and the many associations that art provokes and evokes in our consciousness. The poem is quintessentially Whitworth, I feel. It's about making, it's about textiles, and it's about creatively weaving together material substance or words to create art that opens up a conversation with us. Helen, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Poets and Players kindly asked me to read uh, just a few poems, so I'm going to read three poems and then I'll read the, um, the poem that I wrote for the competition. Um, the first poem I'm going to read uh, by special request of the person that I wrote it about, um, who's, who's here today. The poem is called Secret Name. In winter's dark, you are dual. We cannot know you. Through festivals of souls and lights, you keep your secret. And when spring's storms wake the earth's dark calm to violent life, you will come to claim your name. And the poem was written for my daughter, Rowan. This poem is called May. It is a thickening all around you, each green thing coming into its density. Only the scale is wrong. You, walking upright on the earth, cannot creep under the rhododendron, examine the ways of its deep and fibrous life. Once, it is true, you lay down in the field above the brook and listened by hours to the water's soft monologue, lit cigarettes and watched their small blue hunger. Rite of spring, and non-propitiation. And this is another poem that I wrote about an artwork. Uh, it's written about the painting called Vespers by John Singer Sargent, which is in the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool. Um, so hopefully some of you might have seen it. Um, the poem's called Priest, Corfu, 1909. This priest makes no demand, merely watches from the shadow of the colonnade. He is a gesture. His dark substance indicates, by contrast, the white, uneven path and whiter wall of, we may suppose, his church. Balanced by the solid dark of cypresses beyond the path and shallow flight of white stone steps, Broken walls scrambled by mimosa, he absorbs all ratiocination. Grace is the dark, soft cloak he wears. 
Okay, so this is the poem that I wrote for the competition. Um, it was really interesting to hear what David had to say about it. Um, what I really liked about this artwork is the way that the, the artist uses different media to present and represent, um, in some respects, the same information. And each element of the artwork is its own, um, it's sort of its own, the, the artwork's called text and commentary. And each element of the artwork, I think, is a text in its own right and a commentary on the other elements. And it sets up a really interesting kind of loop. Um, so what I try to do in this poem is, as David said, to come at the same experience uh, in five different ways. And the poem is called Five Windows. One, words being, it seems, the one thing not required by this elegant, eloquent, translating machine, and that being understood, proceed. Two, text, woven cloth, commentary, weaver's notations, text, notations, commentary, weaving process. Text, weaving, commentary, one, film recording, commentary, two, woven cloth. Text, film, commentary, five channel video installation. Text, video, commentary, pictographic video school. Text, woven cloth, commentary, does it begin with pencil on paper or with the knotting of the threads? Does composition take place at the loom or in the editing suite? Can there be any telling which is not also a making? Three, five windows, no, five screens, a North German city, a cold lake and white facades, flags flying, Tall windows fluttered by muslin, Baltic breeze, Jungfernstieg, creak of timber, fingers threading, wooden ceilings, ionic scroll, columns of thread, naked feet, white facades, varnished slats, five windows, no, five screens. Four, the reel to reel in the attic room plays Mr. Tambourine Man. Floorboards under your feet and the thick taste of plaster dust. Hollow knock and creak of wood on wood and the leader tape flapping like the broken winged bird at the window. Five, sign that it is a language full of grace, says Pinsky, quoting a student poet from the Illinois schools for the deaf who'd been asked if you could write one great poem, what would you want it to be about? No, not about, but she wants to show that rhyme can be seen. One gestures knock against another, the knot and scroll of fingers, five windows, five screens, the telling, the weave. Thank you. <laughs>